We saw last time that only a narrow beam of light will shine from a star directly onto the Earth. Most of the light from the star will be reflected from the waters above. Our experience with mirrors in everyday life may give us an idea of what to expect from reflections from the waters above. I'm sure many of us have been in a lift with mirrors on opposite sides. You see your reflection alternately back and front, disappearing into the distance. This used to be a popular theme in films. One of the most famous being Orson Welles' classic Citizen Kane. We see the right side of Mr. Kane, then the reflection of his left side in the mirror, then the reflection of the reflection of his right side from the mirror behind us, and so on. The distances between the left and right side reflections indicate the difference between Mr. Kane's distance from the two mirrors. The images become smaller, less distinct and fainter as they fade away into the distance. There's always loss of energy and clarity with every reflection from any surface. The energy to light depends on the frequency or wavelength. The higher the energy, the higher the frequency, and the shorter the wavelength. At each reflection, there is a loss of energy. So the frequency is reduced and the wavelength increases at every reflection. This is commonly known as redshift. At every reflection of starlight from the waters above, there will be a loss of energy and a corresponding increase in redshift. When William Tift discovered that the redshift measured by astronomers do not change continuously, but in distinct steps, the expanding universe idea was shown to be nonsense. The Earth would have to be surrounded by distinct shells moving at different speeds. The Big Bang should have been abandoned, but the establishment's best-in-the-field dictum does not allow a disproved hypothesis to be rejected until another theory, acceptable to the establishment, has been approved. An even clearer indication that the whole story was untenable came when some of the measured redshifts corresponded to galaxies moving away from us faster than the speed of light. If they're moving away faster than the speed of light, how could light from them ever reach us? Well, perhaps Einstein's and Minkowski's mathematics can explain it away, but how could anyone with any sense fail to see that reality carries more weight than fairy tales? Repeated reflections from the waters above lead to quantized redshifts automatically, and there is no connection between redshift and speed. Redshift depends only on the number of reflections. Seen from the Earth in any direction, the surface of the waters above will be almost flat for a small area. There will be another almost flat area on the opposite side of the universe, so we might expect something similar to the reflections of Citizen Kane in every direction. And for small areas, one might consider almost flat sections at other angles. One bottle of scent between mirrors at 45 degrees looks like eight bottles but we have almost flat areas at every possible orientation. That might present us with a vast number of images. If we look at one girl in a light, with one or two mirrors at different angles, we see a lot of lights and a lot of girls. She's quite close to one mirror and much further away from the other. So her reflections are in groups of two, with large spaces between them. About five or six lines of groups can be made out before they become too dim and small to distinguish. But with a telescope, it would be possible to make out many more disappearing into the distance. The groups tend to form lines with gaps between them, which depend on the spacing of the mirrors. 
Can this tell us anything about what we would expect to see as we look at the stars? It would seem fairly reasonable to expect that the stars, and possibly the first reflections of stars close to the waters above, would appear bright and clear. First reflections from the waters above on the opposite side of the universe would probably be much fainter, but probably still quite clear. Second and higher reflections would probably be progressively dimmer, more degraded and only visible with a telescope. But with the stars, we cannot just look at the reflection of one star at a time. All of the stars are shining. The reflections may be superimposed. There may be some which have reflected many times, which appear to be right next to some which have been reflected only a few times. Would it come as any surprise to find a slice of the Sloan Digital Sky Survey looking like the image on the survey website? I don't think it would be any surprise at all. We see lines of arcs of many images separated by areas with few images. The distances between the dense arcs probably has something to do with the distance from one side of the waters above to the other. The images get dimmer with distance from the centre. No surprise there. The greater the apparent distance, the more times the light has been reflected from one side of the heavens to the other and the more energy has been lost. I think it's obvious that the structure of the universe described in Genesis chapter 1 explains the astronomical observations very well. Both the cosmic background radiation and the apparent distribution of stars are explained far better than the Big Bang explains them. But can we expect the scientific establishment to abandon this totally discredited tattered remnant of a failed hypothesis? I don't think so. Many eminent scientists have pointed out for many years that it can't be true. But the likes of John Maddox and Fred Hoyle have been pushed aside. They've been pushed aside because there are so many in the scientific establishment like George Wald who grit their teeth and say, I do not want to believe in God. Therefore, I choose to believe in that which I know to be scientifically impossible. And because of this deliberate choice, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. But for some reason, our society continues to hold scientists in awe. Society continues to bow before the pronouncement that something is scientific. I think instead... We should take note of what 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20 tells us. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.